Hi everybody, this is Bruce here. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Traveling with Bruce. Please subscribe to my channel today and become a key supporter of Traveling with Bruce by clicking the Patreon link. Enjoy the video. Hey everybody, it's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to another, another one of my update videos, updating Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Irma, and the damage that was left behind here in the Caribbean. Um, a number of islands, as we know, Puerto Rico here, uh, St. Croix, just to the right of it, St. Thomas, St. Martin, uh, Dominica, they are off the cruise ship uh, itineraries for quite some time. We all know about the power outages, the water problems, food problems, logistical problems. Um, some islands have it better than others, but it, it, it is a mess in some of these spots. We're looking here at beautiful pictures of St. Thomas in its glory days. Uh, it wasn't unusual for up to three or four cruise ships at a time to come into St. Thomas for a day. This is the cable car ride that a lot of uh, tourists on cruise ships have ridden, and the view is stunning. It's just so beautiful. Uh, uh, what a great scene. This, unfortunately, isn't going to be repeated for quite some time. The airport in St. Thomas just opened after three weeks of being down to commercial flights. The Kansas Air National Guard has been... Uh, operating the airport using uh, uh, generators and radar systems that have been flown in by the uh, U.S. military to bring the uh, airport back up and running. Permanent radar stations are being reinstalled uh, from scratch. Uh, St. Martin, same thing. This is a shot here of St. Martin, also in its glory days. The, its airport just barely opened and limited commercial flights are starting to come in and out of the island, along with, of course, relief flights that continue. Dominica Airport, they're talking about it just opening as well, uh, and Dominica is even worse off than uh, St. Thomas and St. Martin. Uh, here we can see, you know, how beautiful uh, uh, St. Martin, uh, you know, was before the hurricane hit. And I have a shot here of the uh, port uh, where uh, all the container ships would come in, uh, drop off food, water, um, uh, you know, supplies, hardware supplies, generators, cars, car parts, you name it, uh, fuel, everything else. This harbor here, this area is completely decimated by the hurricane and is still in rough shape. Uh, here's a quick shot of it here, an overhead shot. And you can just see everything is disheveled. Uh, warehouses were, were flooded out, uh, blown off. Uh, uh, power is gone. Water system has gone. Uh, everything has to be rebuilt from scratch. This is at least until the new year before this is really back up and running. And even then, it might only be at 20 25% capacity. Of course, uh, as soon as a disaster happened... Uh, uh, we saw images like this from the air, uh, total devastation of private homes, hotels, resorts, um, you know, people who make their living off the water, uh, fishing and, and, and taking tourists out, uh, decimated. The roads are gone. Uh, you know, we know in Puerto Rico, uh, St. Martin, St. Thomas, ever, everywhere else, there were mudslides in some islands. The muscle was brought in. Uh, the, the National Guard came in. FEMA has come in. A lot of supplies flown in, and um, now supplies are being shipped in and... Uh, and uh, replenished, and uh, they're trying to get the infrastructure up and running. This is a shot here of the airport in St. Thomas. It was down, as I said, up until only a few days ago, and even now the terminal is still a mess. It's uh, badly damaged, and so, uh, you know, it's not a pretty place to fly into these days, unfortunately. Here is a shot of uh, Cayman Islands, uh, Grand Cayman, just off Georgetown. Uh, ships who come that come to the Cayman Islands have to... Uh, park in the water uh, about half a mile offshore. Uh, you cannot bring a ship to a, a pier in the Cayman Islands. They just aren't equipped for that. And so for you to get on or uh, to the island, you're going to have to take a tender. And uh, it is not uncommon on most days for two or three ships to uh, visit the Cayman Islands, sometimes four. But this year, uh, this winter, uh, 250,000 additional tourists are expected, 70 additional ships. There are going to be six ships per day. Uh, uh, waiting to uh, offload and reload passengers. So if you're visiting Cayman Islands on a cruise this year, get ready for mayhem because the dock, uh, the pier, uh, can only handle a couple of tenders at a time. Lineups are the norm, and a lot of it is in open sunshine uh, without co even a cover. It is going to be rough. Uh, uh, so the, the cruise might be a good deal, but uh, the onshore excursions might not be as enjoyable as they were in the past because there's just going to be that much many more tourists. One and a half million tourists today used to go to St. Martin and St. Thomas alone. They are now being diverted to all the other Caribbean stops, and the Cayman Islands is one of the places where they're headed. Grenada is another. They're adding 28 ships uh, this winter. 70,000 more tourists are going to visit Grenada. 
they're happy about it, but uh, I'll tell you, as a tourist, you might not be as happy when the excursions are um, overbooked or totally booked up, buses everywhere, taxis all over the place, complete mayhem, and uh, you're just going to have to get used to uh, noisy, uh, hectic conditions at some of these places. Now, ports like Labadee and, and other private islands that some of the cruise ships run, they won't run into that problem. Uh, Royal Caribbean will take their cruise ships to Labadee, as they've always done, and uh, you'll be able to ride the zip line and the water slides and, and enjoy the beach with the cabanas because they'll limit their own ships into their own uh, luxury ports, of course. But uh, places like uh, Granada and uh, Ojo Rios, uh, the Cayman Islands, uh, Jamaica, um, Cozumel in Mexico, uh, it's it's open season. I mean, these 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 countries and these ports are desperate for the business and they'll accept additional ships if they can. And it might be that three or four of them get to park at the pier and two or three of them will park in the uh, water in the harbor and tender in. So um, you may find that uh, cruise ships, uh, uh, cruise uh, holidays this winter might be, you know, attractively priced, but there's a price you're going to pay for that deal. And it might be that you save $150 on the, uh, the itinerary cost, but you're going to pay dearly for it on shore with hordes of other tourists. So that ship we're looking at there is the Explorer of the Seas. It holds 4,500 passengers. And we know that there are now uh, ships uh, applying the uh, Caribbean with 5,500 passengers each. Um, you multiply, uh, you know, four or 5,000 passengers times five cruise ships in one port, you're talking 15, 20,000 people that are coming in uh, at a time. This is just crazy. Uh, the Caymans announced, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but uh, 21,000 passengers are going to de debark, uh, disembark onto the island on the 14th of November of this year. Uh, we, we already know that for a fact. The island only has 35,000 people living there, so um, it's going to be quite hectic. Well, we'll have to see how it all turns out this winter. Anyway, <clears throat> this was Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Your latest update, I'll try to keep them coming for you. Um, there's a lot of new cruise news coming up, and uh, I'm going to do some Q&A &A, uh, sessions with you guys. If you have any questions, just drop them in my comments on my channel here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions I can for you about cruising. And if you've uh, been here before, uh, give me the like. Uh, let me know you liked the video. If you haven't, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, visit my Patreon page. Uh, so have a good one, and we'll keep you posted. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Bye-bye.